It feels like everybody's Instagram feed is currently covered in springtime photos, especially in Southern California, where a wildflower bloom caused by record-breaking rainfall has caused blooms to sprout from seemingly every patch of dirt, from the neighborhood sidewalk to the desert. But in some areas, the blooms have been further stimulated by last fall's wildfires, and I wanted to talk to some scientists about how those fires might be impacting the local plant life. Biologists Mark Mendelson and Richard Rockman were kind enough to let me join a media hike at the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area to learn more about the recent wildflower blooms and find out how the National Park Service monitors the effects of the fires on the local ecosystem. The day started with a hike to take a look at the plants that had already started to regrow in the area around Paramount Ranch. This area was part of the area burned in the devastating Woolsey Fire in November of 2018 but both native and non-native plants and shrubs had already started to regrow. Some of these wildflowers are considered to be fire followers. A fire follower is a type of plant that is encouraged um, by fire, so it either increases in abundance or in some cases it only comes up following fire. And so it usually has uh, characteristics to its seed that um, where heat or smoke or the chemical residue from the fire caused the seed to germinate. This is owl's clover, a lovely native fire following uh, species. At one point, the hike turned into a little bit of a treasure hunt as we noticed some rare plants growing along the trail and there's little that I love more than scientists excited about the species that they work with. Oh, there's a globe lily. Right here? Yeah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> this is another type of mariposa lily, a globe but, lily. but this we call fairy lantern or globe lily. And then this white flowering facilia is actually the same uh, species as this Paris facilia here. It just happened to have a white morph here. Mark and Richard also showed us some other important native species that have started to regrow or re-sprout after the fire. This here, this is yucca, or also called our Lord's Candle, our first species to re-sprout following the fire, and only about three weeks following the fire, before the rains even came. You look at this and, you know, the casual observer would say, okay, well that's neat, the fire scorched this leaf, you know, right here, and it left the rest of these just like that. But what actually happened was that this, this point right here, this line was all the way down there at the base and all of this growth has happened since the fire. So it's a quick growing species. One of the main components of our chaparral here, chamise, also called greasewood, so it's very flammable. If you look down at the base of the plant, you can see many, many green sprouts that are about six inches coming up from the base. The energy is stored down in the base of the plant. While the flowers that we saw were beautiful and while the fires played a role in their appearance, it's really not good for the local ecosystem that these fires are happening so frequently. One of the fears surrounding these fires is that if they happen too often, something known as type conversion could happen, where too frequent fires disrupt the normal growth cycles of the local ecosystem, causing the type and diversity of plants in the landscape to change. The, the normal fire regime of, of this area is every 50 to 200 years, and we're getting fire way more frequently than that. And our native vegetation types um, didn't evolve with that. So you can have chaparral, for example, changing into coastal sage scrub, and then coastal sage scrub turning into, uh, into non-native annual grassland. So that process is called type conversion, and that's a concern. In general, it's a concern ecologically, but for the National Park Service, part of our mission is to preserve, uh, preserve natural resources in their, in their, in their state. So uh, we are concerned with um, human-induced changes to the, to the natural resources. It's too early to say whether we have type conversion following this fire. Um, we need probably a couple years of data to tell us for sure, but so far we see strong resprouting and recruitment of our shrubs. We headed out to a vegetation monitoring plot where Mark and Richard collected data that will be used to see if these types of changes in species diversity and richness are happening in response to the fires. So we have about 300 um, randomly located plots around the Santa Monica Mountains. Uh, and uh, we are visiting, we normally visit 100 a year, but because of the fire, we have to visit 215. So we have to visit all the plots that burned. 
so uh, we, have our, we have our work cut out for us. We navigated to the plot site where Mark and Richard established a 30 meter transect line along which they would monitor species richness and diversity. This would also become the first side of a 300 meter square rectangle that would be further surveyed. And we're going to lay out a 30 meter measuring tape and we're going to record uh, some data, well, actually a lot of data, alongside it. Um, we're going to record things like um, which species are present, how tall the vegetation is, um, what the burn severity of the plot is, and whether any, any shrubs are coming up. We'll go for the first two years following the fire, and then plots get rested for four years. It means they, they get time to recover from us trampling a little bit um, in collecting our data and then we go out for the, in the two years in a row again, and then rested for four years, then back for two years. So this is called our transect establishment um, slash revisit form. Okay. And, uh, and this is basically the first time we come to a plot, we have to write down a bunch of information about it. Okay. So that we know where it is, how to get there, and, that's, and what it looks like. We're gonna record, we're gonna put a bunch of species names here in their six letter codes. Okay. And then wherever they exist along the tape, this is from zero to 30, we're gonna do a little check. We break it into five meter segments, and then additionally, the first meter of each five meter segments gets recorded separately. And that's so that we can compare our species richness data to other studies around the world that measure species richness within one square meter, five square meters, 30 square meters, uh, 100 square meters, 300 square meters. Okay. We will get the species diversity that's in there. So every single flowering plant species and sometimes flowering plant ally, like ferns, because okay. they're not flowering plants, but we would count them as well. Once the plot was established, Mark and Richard moved their way down the transect line tape, meter by meter, carefully recording every species present. Cecilia hubbii, Cecilia visita, Acma mar, Loop suck. Yeah, there's um, Apiastrum angustifolium. All right, so Eucrypta is here, so that means that... Is that five to six? Yeah, but I think it's also right here. Getting the distinct species correct while monitoring is important. And while they were easily able to identify a lot of plants, I also watched Mark and Richard examine tiny hairs on leaves or measure portions of grasses to make sure they were recording just the right species. The Southern California Mediterranean type ecosystem is one of the most species diverse um, areas on the planet. Our flora has, I think, some seven or 800 plants here in the Santa Monica Mountains. Once finished with those measurements, they would move on to monitoring the larger plot, allowing them to gather data that would let them observe year after year what kinds of plants were returning after the fire, keeping an eye out for possible type conversion. The landscape of the Santa Monica Mountains is, can be resilient to fire. It can recover well from fire, but that depends on getting the right amount of rain, and it depends on the fire return interval, which is that how frequently we get fire. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, this, this can be naturally, our landscapes are resilient to fire and they can recover well and look as beautiful as you know, this does in the landscapes we visited elsewhere today. But if we get too much fire, we're, we are interrupting the natural succession. A huge thank you to Mark and Richard and the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area for welcoming me into the field for a day. I really appreciated it. A thank you to my Patreon patrons for supporting this type of content and a thank you to you for watching. And as always, remember to go forth and do science.